Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're on the range to burn some powder in our mini iron sides cannon from Traditions. Full disclosure, Tradition sent me this kit to build on the channel. You can watch the full build process in its own separate video there. Coming off of building this, it was a lot of fun. Dirt simple to put together. If you have a screwdriver and you have a paintbrush, you can put this together. Uh, I'm a big fan of this and I think we came out with a, a fun result and I'm excited to get this out here on the range. To get started, I'm going to be going through the Traditions Canon manual here. I've never shot a Canon miniature or otherwise, and while this is essentially a smoothbore muzzleloading pistol, I wanna make sure that I'm going through the manufacturer guidelines to make sure I'm doing this in a safe manner before I start getting out here and having fun. The first 24 pages just pertain to basic muzzleloader safety and then the build instructions for each of the Traditions Canon kits. Jumping to page 25 here, we have the first introduction about what it takes to actually shoot your Traditions little cannon here. Um, black Powder, Pyrodex, or 777 are the only suitable propellants for your Traditions muzzleloading cannon. They recommend 1FG Black Powder. It's the coarsest granulation for cannons. You can actually see that being used a lot in full-sized cannons for both military reenacting and then competitions like you see out of the NSSA. So to shoot this cannon, I've got some GoX 2FG powder. It's some old powder that I've had sitting. And then I've got some 490 round balls. These are in pre-lubed uh, patches in this little ball board here. I also have some loose patches here that are out of some pillow ticking and then some 490 round balls in this little flask. Traditions recommends that you use their Traditions Cannon Fuse. I could not get that in time uh, for when my schedule here, so I picked up some Cannon Fuse from Flintlocks LLC at the NMLRA uh, spring shoot this year. We're gonna be using this. It burns at a rate of 40 seconds per foot. Uh, we're actually gonna be verifying that according to Traditions recommendations here, just to make sure that we have a safe length of fuse before we get to shooting. And then uh, always verify that the cannon is loaded or unloaded. I know as a matter of fact that this cannon is unloaded, but we're gonna use our uh, short pistol ramrod here just to verify like we would on anything else. So I've got a hard metal ping down at the base of the breech there. I'm gonna remove the ramrod with my thumb, as you can see here, and my finger uh, aligning with the muzzle. You can mark your ramrods as well, and that's something we really recommend you do on your new muzzle loaders. I can bring that out, I can line up my nail and my finger end on the muzzle, and we can see that our ramrod goes back to our little fuse hole here. So we know this is verified um, to be clear and ready to shoot. So we know our safe load, we know our projectile size, we have all of that around. It's time to do a quick test of our cannon fuse here. And I'm gonna open this like a caveman, I guess. I don't have a ruler, but I'm gonna kind of eyeball a one foot length of this. This comes as 10 feet, and then I've got my little lighter here. So I'm going to set this just right here. I'm gonna get my stopwatch out, and we're gonna verify this rate of burn. This is my loading bench, as you've seen in other videos. I've made sure that there's no residue of black powder or any caps or anything on this bench before I did this test. It'd probably be good to do this on your driveway or like a piece of concrete, maybe a patio paver. Um, but this is just kind of a beat up bench. I'm gonna have to replace these boards anyway down the road, so I'm not too worried about it. As it burnt out there, we were at 33 seconds according to my phone, just about 34. Um, so it's uh, probably a little bit less than a whole one foot section there, but I think we're probably safe uh, to use this lot of cannon fuse and start shooting. Our target today is this line of nondescript military invaders. That was pretty cool. Like any muzzle loader, I'm gonna pick it up, returning my muzzle upward. I think everything burned out and shot out, so we're just gonna load this up and shoot it a few more.
traditions many Ironsides kit is modeled after a real life 24 pounder long gun like you can find even today on the USS Constitution. 24 pounders were used as the main guns on the heaviest frigates of the early 19th century. The Museum of the USS Constitution says that the original cannons mounts would have weighed 470 kilograms. The barrel length would have been approximately three meters, which is huge. The shell weight for a full-sized cannon like this would have been 11.7 kilograms and its caliber would have been 152.2 millimeters. I'm gonna have the math for all of this on the screen. It would have been crewed by 12 gunners and one powder boy. That is 12 men and a boy to each of these cannons. That's just incredible to think about. And you have upwards of a total of the, on the USN's constitution of 50 guns at a time at some point. Now that was gonna be a mixture of these 24 pounders and some other smaller guns or shorter barreled guns, but that's still incredible to think about. I hope that you've enjoyed taking a look at the traditions Mini Ironsides can with me here today and learning along with me cannon functionality, as well as some history behind cannons like this and the ship that this cannon is named after uh, from traditions here. I think this is really neat. This is a section of muzzleloading I, I don't get involved in a whole lot. Military history isn't my bread and butter, very obviously uh, that you can tell here, but it's still a lot of fun to go through and kind of do a little bit of a deep dive on how all of this stuff works and, uh, and where it came from. As far as the Mini Ironsides kit goes, I've talked about the assembly process for this. As far as on the range enjoyment of this kit goes, I've really had a lot of fun with this. If you're used to hunting accuracy with your day on the range, I don't know that the cannon is the thing for you. Even at short distances, you can tell here, I had a little bit of trouble getting on target. And I think that has to do with just elevation. It's not something I've had to deal with. Um, and then obviously no sights on a miniature cannon like this. But even though we didn't hit a lot of our, our invading force here, I think we might have spooked them a little bit and, uh, and maybe bought some time for some of our riflemen up here in the woods. But really, it's a great way to facilitate, you know, kind of exposing maybe some friends or family members to black powder, to muzzle loading, and to history in general, uh, these kits. Really, it's just a neat little thing. I've really enjoyed my time with it. Um, from the building aspect to bringing it out here on the range. This is definitely something I'm gonna be taking to some range days uh, when I have a group of people or some friends around just to give everybody a little bit of exposure to this kind of shooting. I wanna to say too real quick, I know we don't have a lot of shots on target here, but I made sure to be safe each time I set up and shot this cannon. All of the shots went somewhere in this berm. The elevation here wouldn't allow for this cannon to go up over my berms and back into the woods. That's something you really wanna be careful of. It's something that I, I didn't really realize how different shooting this would be. Um, so please, as always, be safe when you're out shooting your muzzleloaders, especially your little miniature cannons, and make sure you know what's at your backstop and beyond. Before we close, stand at least six feet away. When this goes off, Everything goes down range, but out of your touch hole here, you're gonna have some powder and some of your fuse residue go up from that. And it's going to shower in about a three foot radius around this cannon. Um, there were a couple times I didn't realize that I was too close and I had some hot embers land on me. So make sure that when you're shooting this, especially you are standing that six feet away and make sure that you are 10, 15, 20 feet away from where you're loading. Because if there's powder on your bench, I just wanna bring this up, I don't mean to be a, you know, a controlling safety guy, but you wanna make sure that none of those embers coming off of that fuse when this lights off can land on your bench and light up any powder cans or any loose powder on your bench. Once again, I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. I'd like to thank Traditions again for sending me this kit to play with on the channel. I'm looking forward to getting it out some more for some different scenarios and some other fun things. If you have any ideas on what you'd like to see out of this cannon, please let me know and I'll try to get it scheduled here as we head into the warmer months of the year. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about this or anything else related to muzzleloading, please visit ilovemuzzleloading.com. Thank you.